Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Security Speak Easy Show, where we talk all things network security. Today, we'll cover a topic that is important for all businesses, network security management. And we'll also discuss the benefits of a centralized network security management solution. My name is Mohit, and I'm on the marketing team here at Paul Alta Networks. Joining me is Chris Motley, a solutions engineer who has been at Paul Alta Networks for almost seven years. Hey, Mohit. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Chris. Welcome to the show. I see you got some guitars in your background. Are you an avid guitar player? Uh, I, I used to be an avid guitar player. Uh, now I have two kids, and those are my hobby. Uh, so instead, I trade uh, playing bass lines now for, for chasing two uh, three-year-old and one-year-old around the, uh, around the house. Oh, no, that makes sense. Yeah. Priorities change and then time gets consumed. Um, do what you got to do now with chasing them, chasing them around with COVID. Yeah, exactly. I get it. And I wanted to start off with the quick statistics that I keep hearing around the industry. The most common statistic that I keep hearing is 99% of firewall breaches and bypasses are caused by policy misconfiguration, not firewall flaws. This leads me to my first question. What does an environment look like without a centralized management solution? So I can speak to this because I know I live this. Uh, I used to be before I was at a uh, at the manufacturer side, I worked at a partner side and then sort of in the between, I took a little stint working at a customer. So I was in the financial industry. I was managing 17 pairs of firewalls and it was brutal. Let's just let's just say that. Every task that you think of, uh, when when you do it with a centralized manager, it takes you know, it takes X amount of time. Think about doing that 17 times, or and waiting in between, right? So, one of the challenges when you don't have a centralized management platform is that it becomes very difficult to do the same thing over and over again in a um, repeatable fashion because we're humans, we make errors, and the more times you repeat a task. Right? the more pairs of firewalls you have or the more tasks you have, the less likely it is that you're going to do all of them perfectly. And so what we've seen, and, and we have, we don't have hard statistics on this, this is just you know, uh, living through the trenches with our customers. The more often a customer doesn't have central management or doesn't utilize central management because we have customers who own it and then choose to do everything one off anyway, you find that the configs drift. You find that the tasks that they have are, are kind of onerous. They, they become difficult. And we yeah. really try to make sure that we're keeping, you know, their workload, their operational burden down as much as possible. And centralized management really is, is key for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It sounds like you like face a lot of complexity when actually managing those 17 pairs of firewalls. So which leads me to my next question. Like why was centralized management so important for you when it came to like operating all of your network security infrastructure well so beyond the you know doing a a configuration task you know being able to have something be repeatable it also makes it less messy to look through and i have i suffer from a little bit of ocd uh and and this makes it really difficult for me when i'm looking at a customer's config or when i was looking at my old configs to keep track of things, right? We can only keep so many things in our brain at one time. And when you have, you know, say 17 configs like I was dealing with, they were on 17 different consoles. But even if you pulled all of those 17 configs into one place, but you had 17 copies of it, that means every change you have to make has to be done 17 times. It doesn't afford you the ability to uh, propagate a single change across your environment in a really short amount of time, nor does it allow you to do upgrades kind of at a central place, All right? So Panorama, our central management platform is really, really good at keeping the changes that you need to do in one group. So if I wanna make changes to all my environment to block a, bat, a malicious IP or block a URL, I make that change once and push it out to all my devices, whether that be on-prem, virtual or cloud-based. And it's a really big, big time savings as well as just, you know, from a pure burnout perspective, you know, when, it, when a change window you need to do for 17 firewalls, in my example, again, you're, you might get tired of hearing the number 17. But in my perspective, when I was doing 17 changes, 
they were serial changes, meaning I had to do one change, then the next change, then the next change, then the next change. And if that takes 20 minutes per change with five to 10 minutes of verification in between, I'm spending half a day or more every time there's a change. Okay. That is not scalable. Right? We've, we've come up with a lot of really good, in, uh, really good innovations with regards to scheduling changes, with regards to pushing changes at a particular time, with regards to rolling back if a change is ineffective. We have a really, really you know, helpful system to sort of make the network burnout, right? and, and that I, was, I was a victim of this, burnout on the network security side or on the engineering side, uh, minimized as much as we can. Yeah, it sounds like... Geez, it sounds like you know you saved a lot more time, and you were able to operate at an efficient pace when managing everything. But I wish I could say I wish I could say I was the one who saved the time. I unfortunately lived through the before and after I left. They got the they got the centralized manager at my my strong recommendation. But the point still stands. It was it yeah. was brutal, and it was much better life afterwards. You know, a part of uh, like centralized management is is visibility, right? Because just because you're collecting a lot of logs, you have that visibility into the environment. So can you give me some more insight into how visibility actually fits into the picture here? Sure. Yeah. So that's the other sort of half of the coin, other side of the coin from when you're doing operational changes and you're doing these manual configuration tasks. Well, it's not necessarily all about that. There are other people in the environment, whether it be the operations teams, the security teams that need ongoing visibility. And so centralized reporting means I don't have to go to 17 devices in my case and look for those reports. That means that I can configure one report that goes across my entire org, or I can look for a particular uh, IOC that I'm trying to hunt down. I can look at those in one place at one time, all, all encompassing. The ability to do that, whether it's on-prem or whether it's in the data lake, it gives you a really quick perspective on creating reports that are repeatable that you can send to a, in a summary kind of format up to executives, it gives you the visibility that, that you kind of require, right? As an organization that may be global, that may be across many, many hundreds or thousands of, of firewalls, it gives you that ability. Even if you have 10 firewalls though, I, I would say that this is a no brainer in terms of you wanna put all those logs together and not be pulling from X number of places to do that. Yeah, it makes sense. If you have logs all over the place, you want a centralized view into those logs as well for consistency. Exactly. Um, I know you, you, know, you brought up the fact that you used to be on the end where you used to actually go through managing network security infrastructure and firewalls. Sure. And I'm positive you've seen the benefits of a centralized solution, something like Panorama. Mm -hmm. Do you have an example of like what the average ROI is or what the ROI looks like? Well, I mean, take that example I used before. If I was doing a single upgrade, which happens multiple times a year, it's just sort of the nature of the beast. If I was doing an upgrade and it, it cost me a day or half a day to do that upgrade, if it went perfectly, not only am I talking about weekend work, which might be time and a half if I'm working hourly or a contractor, but if I'm an employee, that takes me from doing a day's worth of work. And if I have to do that two to three, four times a, a year, maybe once a quarter, and you multiply that by the other tasks that I have to do rather than just an upgrade, every time I'm making a config change, it takes you know two to three hours. You can see how this would pile up, right? Especially in smaller organizations where there aren't too many people doing these changes. You can see how these hours, right? Your death by a thousand paper cuts is a great, a great analogy for this, where I might just spend instead of eight hours a day, I might only have six hours a day to do my engineering work, then tie in meetings, tie in all of these things. I may, my company may have to hire another person just to get the normal amount of work done. Whereas if it takes me 20 minutes to do a change, now I'm back in business. You know, I've saved for every change, I may have saved an hour and a half. Right? That's, a, that's a significant change. And if we know anything about firewall management and, and companies, is that there's not just one change a week, right? There's many, many changes. And so yeah. if, this, if this has to be replicated multiple times, you know, you can just see where, where an entire body gets dedicated to that task. And that's not how we want our organizations to be, uh, mm -hmm. to be operating. 
I'm, I'm sure as, as the environment gets more and more complex, as you add more and more firewalls, it just gets more and more challenging to do that unless you have something that scales like you pointed out earlier. Well, Chris, thanks for taking time out of your day to sit down with me and talk more about managing firewalls and how to scale that with a management solution. And everybody in the audience, if you like today's episode, hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and visit paulsnetworks.com. See you guys in the next episode.